Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at how to find the frequency and period of an AC supply. So let's get started. Now it says here that we can use the wave patterns appearing on an oscilloscope to calculate the peak voltage and the frequency of an AC supply. The peak voltage, first of all, is determined by something called the Y gain setting on the oscilloscope. And this is vertical on the screen. So when we're trying to find the peak voltage, we're going to be dealing with almost like the Y axis of this screen. So we're going to be considering the divisions on the screen up and down the way. However, frequency is determined by the time-based setting on the screen. And this is actually horizontal on the screen. So we're actually going to be dealing with the X axis or the horizontal divisions on the screen when we're trying to find the period or the frequency. So this picture, although it's quite blurry, shows that we've got the time base up the top here and this controls the time setting per centimeter or the time setting per division because each division here on the screen is usually a centimeter. And you can see we've got the Y gain down here as well and this controls the voltage setting per centimeter or per division. So first of all, to find the peak voltage, what you need to do is count the number of boxes from the center of the wave, i.e. the axis, to the top of the wave, which is also known as the crest. Or in other words, we need to find how many boxes form the amplitude of the wave. And then what we need to do is multiply this by the Y gain setting to get the peak voltage. And so we could write this as peak voltage is equal to the Y gain setting times the number of divisions for the amplitude. So if I look at my oscilloscope screen here, let's say the Y gain setting here was set to five millivolts per division. And you can see that my amplitude is one, two, three boxes up the way. So that means I've got five millivolts per division times three divisions, which gives me 15 millivolts as my peak voltage. And then to find the frequency, there's a bit more involved. And remember, we're dealing with the X axis or the horizontal plane this time on the oscilloscope screen. So first of all, we need to count the number of boxes for one complete wave, i.e. one wavelength. So this could be from one crest to the next adjacent crest, or one trough to the next adjacent trough, or it could just be from one point in the wave to the same point on the next wave. What you then need to do is multiply this by the time-based setting to get the period of the wave T. That is, we could say the period is equal to the time-based setting times the number of divisions for one complete wave horizontally. And then once we know the period, we can use this familiar equation from the Nat5 waves topic, F equals one over T, in order to calculate the frequency. So if I go back to my picture of the oscilloscope screen here, you can see that one complete wave going from, say here, all the way up, all the way down and back to the start, is four divisions along. So that means I have four divisions and let's say my time base setting was two milliseconds per division, then that means I would have two milliseconds per division times the four divisions, which would give me eight milliseconds for my period. And then once I know my period, I can sub that in to this equation here, F equals one over T, which would be one over the eight milliseconds, and that would give me one over eight times 10 to the minus three, which would give me my frequency in this specific example. Just to show you another example, let's say I've got a signal generator connected to an oscilloscope screen via some wires. And let's say I want to find the frequency of the AC supply. Then what I would do is I would count how many boxes horizontally make up one complete wave. So if I went from the crest here to the crest over here, you can see that as a distance of one, two, three, four, five divisions. And you can see that my time base setting is at two milliseconds per division. So this means I could do my five divisions times the two milliseconds per division, which gives me 10 milliseconds for my period. And then I could sub that into my equation F equals one over T in order to get the frequency. But remember when you do this, you need to convert from milliseconds into seconds. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you find it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.